Hi, this is Daniel DiTuro. Are low glycemic index and low carb diets the secret to rapid weight loss and a healthy diabetes free life? In this video, I'm sharing information about carbs and blood glucose, the difference between increased blood glucose and blood glucose spikes, what is the glycemic index, its limitations, and do low glycemic index or low carb diets prevent obesity and diabetes? First, carbohydrates are nutrients from plant foods. Meat, fish, and poultry have little or no carbohydrates. Fats and oils have zero carbs. There are three types of carbohydrates, fiber, sugar, and starch. Fiber is not digested, provides zero calories, and does not raise blood sugar levels. Sugars in starch have four calories a gram and are more easily digested than fats and protein. When you eat carbohydrates, the sugar glucose is absorbed directly into your bloodstream through the small intestine. Your liver converts other sugars and starches into glucose and releases the glucose into your bloodstream. As glucose enters your bloodstream, your pancreas releases insulin, allowing cells to absorb glucose for fuel. Your body tries to maintain about four grams of total blood glucose 24 hours a day. Excess glucose is either converted to body fat or stored as glycogen in your liver and muscles for later use. Fasting blood glucose exceeding 126 milligrams per deciliter is called diabetes. Type 1 diabetes requires regular insulin injections to control blood sugar levels. Unlike type 1 diabetes, where the pancreas makes little or no insulin, type 2 diabetes is usually caused by eating too many carbohydrates. Type 2 diabetes is usually controlled or prevented by diet, exercise, and non-insulin medications. Uncontrolled diabetes is one of the leading causes of blindness and limb amputations. As I've shared in the previous segment, increased blood glucose levels are natural following meals including carbohydrates. This appetizer, high in protein and fat, will only cause a slight increase in blood glucose. Whereas this high-carb brownie and ice cream dessert will cause a large spike. Ideally, you want to maintain a fasting blood glucose level less than 100 mg per deciliter. Except for very low-carb diets, blood glucose spikes are normal following a meal. Problems develop when the amount of blood glucose exceeds the amount of insulin produced by your pancreas, and when fasting blood glucose exceeds 100 mg per deciliter. This increases your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It's not rocket science that diets high in carbs, especially refined carbs, increases blood glucose. There's a significant difference between diets high in natural carbs versus diets high in highly processed carbs. There's been a dramatic increase in obesity and type 2 diabetes in the U.S. over the past few decades. There has also been a dramatic shift from home-cooked to prepared foods. Research shows Americans are eating about 500 calories more than they did in 1970. Is weight gain and diabetes caused by blood glucose spikes and increased hunger pangs, or diets providing too many calories? It may be both. The truth is, no one really knows the answer because each person is unique. It's easy blaming obesity and diabetes on high sugar and starch foods. But you don't need a fad diet 
to reduce the number of high-calorie prepared foods from your diet. There are four sources of calories, carbohydrates, fat, protein, and alcohol. Alcohol is the second highest source of calories. Some people get 10% or more of their daily calories from alcoholic beverages. Liquor, wine, and some beers have the low-carb diet seal of approval. Any health benefits from alcoholic beverages comes from plant chemicals like polyphenols, not from alcohol. Alcohol is a dangerous toxin your body must remove. I know of no instance of carbs causing liver damage or cirrhosis of the liver. While some alcoholic beverages are low carb, they are not low calorie. Excess calories is the leading cause of weight gain. Just two 12 ounce bottles of beer has about 300 calories, mostly from alcohol. Ideally, you want to eat enough calories to get enough essential nutrients from your diet and maintain a healthy weight. The exact number of calories differs from person to person depending on their metabolism and activity level. Despite claims of miracle universal fad diets, in reality there is no one-size-fits-all diet plan. Diet plans providing perfectly portioned meals that reduce blood glucose spikes and guarantee rapid weight loss are a myth. Active people need more calories than sedentary people. And being physically active reduces the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. The one-size-fits-all low-carb diets ignore metabolism and activity level. For thousands of years, most people ate minimally processed carbs. There were no supermarkets stocked with hundreds of highly processed, refined carb prepared foods. Or restaurants serving meals providing a day's worth of calories. Until the 19th century, only the aristocracy and wealthy could afford sugar. By the mid 20th century, Processed foods began replacing home-cooked meals. People began eating more calories while reducing physical activities. So is high blood glucose spikes really the root cause of diabetes and obesity? That is the theory behind many low-carb fad diet plans. Their solution? Drastically reduce carbs to 50 grams or less a day. But these very low-carb diets are designed for overweight people with one or more chronic medical conditions. Even a 100% plant food diet is not a 100% carbohydrate diet. Vegans eat a 100% plant food diet that provides carbs, fats, and protein. Some low-carb diets claim eating a sweet apple causes glucose spikes that contribute to obesity and type 2 diabetes. A study published in July 2020 on thebmj.com indicates the risk of developing type 2 diabetes was 25 to 50 percent lower for people eating diets high in fruits and vegetables including sweet fruit. Most people typically develop type 2 diabetes eating diets high in low fiber processed carbohydrates and living a sedentary lifestyle. The glycemic index was developed to help people with type 1 diabetes identify high carbohydrate foods. The glycemic index ranks plant foods on a scale of 0 to 100 or higher with pure glucose rated 100. The glycemic index is calculated based on the average blood glucose response of 10 participants over a 2 to 3 hour period for one specific food. Foods are then placed in one of three groups based on their score. 
Low GI foods have a score of 55 or less, medium 56 to 69, and high 70 and higher. The glycemic index is not perfect, but some fad diets use it to justify their diet plan. Some limitations include ripeness. Ripe fruit has a higher GI than unripe fruit. Cooking methods. Cooking or overcooking foods increases its GI. Processing. Refined grains have a higher GI than whole grains. How your body processes nutrients. Some people have higher blood sugar levels eating the same foods. And the glycemic index applies to one specific food eating raw or prepared and cooked in a specific way. For example, some people are led to believe high-carb foods like a baked russet potato has one and only one glycemic index and it's higher than glucose. They claim eating a white potato is worse than eating pure glucose. Here's the glycemic index for a baked russet potato. The serving size was 150 grams and provided between 25 to 30 grams of carbohydrates. The glycemic index ranges from 56 to 111, but how is that possible? The participants who averaged 56 were diabetic while the participants who averaged 111 were not. This is interesting data. I've had comments from several viewers that diabetics cannot eat high-carb foods like white potatoes, but this data contradicts those comments. Low-carb diets that claim eating a baked russet potato or any white potato is worse than eating pure glucose based on a GI of 111 is misleading. And claims eating white potatoes will cause blood sugar spikes, weight gain, and type 2 diabetes is also misleading. As you've seen, a 150 gram potato has about 30 grams of carbohydrates. For diets restricting carbs to 50 grams a day or less, 30 grams is 60% or more of their daily carb limit. That makes potatoes a high carb food. For a 2000 calorie diet, that's 50% carbs, a potato providing 30 grams of carbs is only 12% of the daily total. Hundreds of prepared foods provide more than 30 grams of carbohydrates per serving and some are advertised as health foods. One 20 ounce can of this energy drink has more than twice the calories, twice the carbs, zero fiber, is mostly sugar, and has less than one gram of protein. With a multi-million dollar marketing budget, vitamin-enriched caffeinated sugar water becomes a health drink. As soon as you add fat or protein, like butter or bacon, you reduce food's glycemic index. Cooking in fat also reduces a food's glycemic index. Mashed potatoes' glycemic index is generally higher than a baked or fried potato. But glycemic index is for one specific food prepared a specific way, not for a meal. How this meal increases blood glucose depends on portion sizes and how your body absorbs nutrients. The chicken thighs have a GI of zero. The boiled spinach also has a very low GI of one. The mashed potatoes are high at 90. While there's no GI for the mushroom gravy, it's low carb at only five grams. Total carbs for this meal is 50 grams, seven grams of fiber, five grams of sugar, and 38 grams of starch. Subtracting the fiber, I have 43 grams of net carbs. 
While 43 grams of net carbs is high for a very low carb diet, for a 2,000 calorie diet that's 50% carbs, it's only 17% of the daily total. Adding high GI potatoes to a low to medium GI soup or stew can significantly lower its glycemic index. For most people, including type 2 diabetics, there's no evidence to support banning high GI fruits and vegetables. For most people, the main cause of high blood glucose spikes and high fasting blood sugar levels are diets high in refined carbohydrates. As I just said, for most people, limiting total daily carbs is more important than limiting or banning high GI foods. Especially when it comes to diets, limiting or banning natural, minimally processed foods. In most cases, obesity is due to diets providing too many calories and type 2 diabetes to diets providing too many highly processed carbs. Until the mid-20th century, type 2 diabetes was called diabetes of the wealthy. Today, it's more likely to be diabetes of the poor. Most middle and low income people can afford refined white flour and sugar and products made from these ingredients. For people who do not cook or bake, there are hundreds of inexpensive, high-calorie, refined flour and sugar foods and beverages. When it comes to eliminating foods and beverages from your diet, most people are better off eliminating processed foods than natural foods. There are exceptions when eliminating one or more foods, like having a food allergy, intolerance, or sensitivity. Another reason is having a chronic disease, like heart, kidney, or liver disease. Today, convenience is valued over quality, but it can come at a high price. People working two or more jobs or long hours to make ends meet may not have time to prepare nutritious home-cooked meals. They rely on low-cost, high-calorie, nutrient-deficient foods for themselves and their children. A diet that's 50% high-quality carbs can provide anywhere between 200 to 400 grams of carbohydrates daily without overworking the pancreas and increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes. Plant foods provide anti-cancer, antibiotic, and anti-inflammatory phytochemicals not found in meat and fat. Many are better sources of essential vitamins and minerals like vitamin C and potassium. And only plant foods provide fiber that can help control blood cholesterol and sugar absorption. Most people can eat foods they love in moderation, maintain a healthy weight, and prevent chronic diseases. Every diet comes down to choices. You can make healthy or unhealthy choices. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.